working for Chimpanzee Sanctuary and Wildlife Conservation Trust as a field assistant and as a database manager, and specifically access and spreadsheets. Yeah. Um, I will give you a brief background of the organization. Chimpanzee Sanctuary and Wildlife Conservation Trust is a national NGO established in 1988 to promote the understanding, appreciation, and conservation of chimpanzees and their habitats in particular and wildlife in general. If you visit this website, you can get more about it. But why chimpanzees of all mammals? Um, first of all, chimpanzees are under great threat because of the high rates of clearance for of their habitats. That is the forests. And why are they cleared? For agriculture and settlement, name it. And about 5,000 is left in Uganda, while between 70,000 and 110,000 in the DRS Recon. That's according to the recent studies, that is 2003 IUCN. If you visit that, you'll get more about it. Um, why is, okay, I didn't introduce the program. It's, uh, Maybe it's the next, um, sorry about it. I'll go back to it. Introduction is still continuing. But how are we concerning the remaining individuals? It's a partnership with Jane Goodall Institute and World Wide Fund for Nature, World Conservation Society, and the government of Uganda, that is Uganda Wildlife Authority and National Environment Management Authority. Um, but how are we doing it? It is through community-based habitat monitoring programs, um, but as this is supported by other programs, for example, the payments for ecosystem services, where we give an incentive to the local communities to ensure that the homes of these animals are secure. Uh, what are the activities under the program? I mean, how do we get the information as far as these animals are concerned? Through mammal surveys, we do mammal surveys, we do chimpanzee tracking, we do nest counts. Maybe if I go back to mammal surveys and chimpanzee tracking, the aim is to trace their movements and to get to know their occurrences that the trends. How much have we left with? How much have we lost? And for the next counts, because we are also ensuring that their, their homes are secure, we want to know what are the best species that at least we should encourage the communities not to tamper with because these animals will lose their homes. And also, under this program, we do community sensitizations. Because communities ask themselves, why are we conserving chimpanzees? Yet they are learning to us. So it goes all about with sensitization as a result of the coexistence of the communities and these animals resulting to human wildlife conflicts. For example, if they veg, they crop gardens. What do we use? to monitor these animals. It's, uh, we use geographical positioning systems and we use the data sheets. We have templates designed by the institution to capture this data. And for example, for mammal currencies, we have a tool that we use. We use distance software, if you've heard of it. It is to design and analyze uh, distance sampling surveys for estimating population size. And I think and this program is 
Lisa. Um, we work in the western part of the country of Uganda, and this is around Masindi. If you find the Albertine Rift, that's where the species are still found and a threat, and have to put efforts to have them conserved. So the program runs from Masindi and Hoima. Yeah, these are some of the individuals we can see the close resemblance we have. It is 98.7%. We share the genes. And the threat I was talking about, if you look at this, because the community takes them to be vermins, they use one traps. So we have to sensitize the communities of not about not um, let our unique species get extinct. That is confusing. So how is this information coming in in our organization using the templates that we designed? This information comes like this, very dirty as you can see it. This, I want to bring in the impact of this training. So looking at the data that we collect, that's how it looks. Some is missing, missing some coordinates. Uh, the names are not really standard. Yeah, I just want to see, to show you how this information comes in in the organization and how we are going to use what we learned from this course to apply it and come up with the best data sets. So, from the, yeah, because we have a lot of this data coming in, we partner with Macquarie University, which is an institute, a main campus for Uganda, and they have uh, a national biodiversity data bank where we upload our data to be accessed by the scientists and researchers, although not worldwide, let me say. So, and according to their format, this is what we fill in, according to what we have. But after this training, I realized we still had a lot to at least clean up. So, I went further using this to apply the down core terms using Google Refine. And I don't know whether the third term is clear. We came up with the terms that Darwin gives us according to what we collected. And this one teaches me one thing, that data cleaning doesn't stop at the collector. If you can do everything to have it cleaned to the best, then you can go on. Because this was the first thing that I did, and with my colleagues, we applied the Darwin core terms we saw it worked, but this office, our session also, when we shared it with Kyle, it really showed us that there was still more to clean up. So if you clean, you can pass it to me. I clean and also another colleague cleans up to when it becomes clean and ready for publishing. So with that, we've discovered more. This was done before the office hours. And I think when I go back, I'm going to add value to it. And also, using the data set, we went on to um, check whether we, these were the right names of the species we had using ICAT name parser. So, like we all know how to do it. I will not demonstrate that because of time, and I'm here to share what I've picked from the sessions. So, looking at this, the way it instructs us to put the scientific names. So, this is what it shows. It shows the genus and the specific name. So, for all the, the six species that we do have in the region. And then the results show, okay, we went on, uh, went on to identify one species and search to get the best scientific name 
and to identify it because there are many species. The results showed, like for example, Colbus prosera, we had the genus and the species. But when we went on to search, we found out it has very many species under that. So we had to go on, and at least our work now, my work, is to go back and identify that species and give it the right name. That, will, that tells me I have to use maybe the author to differentiate one species from the other, or to add the, is it the infra-specific other name? So I have a lot of work on this, a lot of data in this room, but I know this is simplified for me. So something to note from these sessions and the data we collect, um, we have to be specific with the animal or plant species. Um, for example, that's what I've just said, include the infra-specific epithet name. If not, the author's name to be more specific. And also we need to know which software reads a specific data format. For example, the experience I'm not showing this year, but I was trying to say like I wanted to publish the top to get to that time that it's ready to be published, you know? But I discovered like <laughs> I wasn't very sure which program reads which format you save your data. So we just need to be keen about that. For example, if you're using uh, Google Refine, which data format will it accept, for example, now, for that one I'm sure, it is accepting C, SV, 